If you love automation, there's a great chance that you've already started exploring what we're calling human in the loop automation. This is automation that goes through a workflow, but has some human interaction at points throughout the automation. It's not fully automated. It needs a little bit of interaction. Well, in this video, we're gonna be breaking down the newest feature from the king of human in the loop automation. I'm thinking of Ply. So if learning about this new portals feature from Ply is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you unlock the full potential of no code tools and human in the loop automation is a huge part of that. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Ply's latest feature, the portals that they have just released. It's going to allow you to do even more with human in the loop automation. But before we get to that, let me first invite you to join me for some automation training. It doesn't matter what tool you're using, automation follows the same rules and I break it down for you in my free training. Grab that training at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen and take a look at what we've got going here. And I want to invite you to join me, follow along here in your own Ply account. If you don't already have one, please click the link that I've shared with this video. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. So here I am inside of Product Hunt and you can see that Ply has just launched their new portals. And this is how they are discussing this. They're saying forms powered by AI and your data. Ply portals are powerful form-like experiences that are connected to your data in real time. Combine your processes, AI, business logic to make your ideal customer workflows. No coding required. Let's take a look under the hood and see exactly how this all works. I'm flipping into Ply now. This is a brand new Ply account. I haven't actually taken any steps in here yet. I'm going to create my first portal. Now, first I'm asked to give my portal a name, but before we get to that, let's brainstorm a concept here. Like what could we do with a portal that maybe we couldn't do on its own with just a basic automation? Well, let's imagine a workflow. Let's say people go to our website and are taking some sort of action. They're filling out their information and we need them to go through an onboarding process. Now that onboarding process is going to follow a very linear path, but people could start and stop at multiple times. They could come in and do one part, come back later and do the second part. So I've put in Airtable some ideas here. Over in Airtable, we have a contacts table now. I have a name and an email and a stage. This is very bare bones. I imagine if you launched something like this, it would be much more complicated, but I'm boiling it down to the bare elements for demonstrative purposes. So here we are, we've got these three different stages. We have the agreement signature that needs to happen. That, that has to happen before we can move on to step two, which is we get their pay deposit. And then in step three, they are fully onboarded. So we need to bring them through these different stages of the onboarding process. Now, the other option is they're not even in our system. They might not even already have an account inside of our database yet. So all of this can be brought into our Ply portal. Let's map it out and start building how we could imagine this type of process to work with a portal. So let's give our portal a name. We will call this onboarding and we will create this new portal. Now, once we create it, it's going to set up the basic building blocks of the portal. Namely, this is what happens to start the thing off. Users are going to load this URL. Then we're going to get this interface and then we're going right to a thank you screen. Now, obviously, we're going to build a lot more in the process here. So inside of the build section, note that I'm in build mode. I'm going to click in here and add on my interface. What do I want them to interact with when they first get here. Let's say we ask for their email address. So I can just go email input, drop that in. And just for simplicity's sake, we can just do that. Now, at this point, people will come in and see that interactive portal asking for their email address. We can even add a title here. Let's say, um, please provide email. And then that user will be able to put in their email address. Now, the cool part about this is we can now ping our database and figure out where this user is in the process. So let's go down under the submission here. After they've put in the portal, we're going to add a new step and we're going to add an integration. So here I'm going to click integrations and I'm going to find Airtable in my search bar above. Now, Airtable is 
a tool, obviously, that we can connect with here. But what do I want to do? I want to find that user inside of my Airtable database. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find the search records advanced. Uh, I haven't actually done this before in Ply, so I'm hoping I'm using the right step. But first, we need to connect our account. So let's go ahead and connect us up to Airtable. As you would imagine, this is pretty point and click. So we can add our integration. We can add a base, all future and current bases in the workspace and grant access. Or you can be more granular and only give access to specific databases. Now, you can see the ply is getting connected with Airtable. And then we can provide our connection name. Apparently, I did connect here once before. Uh, this is going to be called Gareth Space. And we're going to save it here and we've now been updated. So let's find now after the previous steps. So I'm saying after the previous step is run, then I wanna search for my records here in Airtable. Let's continue on to the next stage. So let's start by connecting to our base. I've called my base in Airtable ply portal test so we can search for it here. Let's go PLY, there it is, ply portal test. Now, if you have multiple tables, you'll need to select the table. Of course, I only have the one, so it's easy to find. It's my contacts table. And I want to filter it by a formula. I want to find the record where the email address that was provided here is being used to search in this field. So let's provide that uh, search formula. So I'm going to say, all right, back over here, we've got the please provide your email. You can see I didn't actually complete this step. So I actually need to go back and run this to create sample data. So back in my portal step, I'm going to say run to create sample data. Let's go ahead and click on run here. It's going to, this is exactly what the portal looks like. This is how my users are going to interact. I'll provide my email address and click done. This will now be used in the next step. So I've captured my email address in the portal test. And now I can go into my search records and we can bring that in. So here we go. We say grab whatever the output was for this. And let's go ahead and do a find lower, just as actually they've put this uh, formula in for us here. Let's go ahead and bring it in there. So the value to search here is the field that we just found in the last step. So let's bring that out, put it in here, and I'll bring it back in. So what this formula is saying is find this email address after you've brought it to all lowercase, just in case someone uses a capital letter. And then I want to find it in, and then I need to give it the field name. In Airtable, I've given the field name of email, which you see right here. Let's flip back into ply and just plug that into the field name here. And I will type it in. This is case sensitive. So my overall formula is saying I'm going to find the lowercase email address that was provided in the previous step, and I'm going to look for it here. And am I going to sort results? No, I should ever only find one. So let's go ahead and test this step and see if we got our formula written correctly. You see that we did. So this is the information that Ply found when it ran the search. It found me, it found the stage of the agreement, and this is critical. And then it also found that email address right? Because that's the whole key that matched up this whole component. Great. Now we have it. And now we can build the next steps of our automation, our, our overall workflow. So again, let's go back and reimagine what we have happening here. Number one, maybe they don't exist in our database. We need to have a particular workflow that happens in that case. Number two, maybe they exist in our database and they are in, as we are, the agreement signature phase. Well, then we need to provide the agreement so that they can sign. And in phase two, they've already signed. Now it's time for them to pay. And then finally, they're fully onboarded. So we have basically four different outcomes that could happen after we search the record here. So we can build that pathing by clicking here and saying logic. We can add branches now to our entire workflow. And you can see now that we have the ability to go down different paths, all of this happening inside of the portal itself as people are working in here. So one particular example might be that in this previous step, we didn't actually find anything in our search records, right? And in this case, we would need to build a new user inside of our system. So how would we add this? Well, this place here is where we actually put in the different things or the action steps that we want to have occur when this branch is gone, right? So in this particular case, we would say, well, we're going to ask the user for their name. We can put in another interface screen and we can say, we don't have... Uh, a record for you. Let's go ahead and do that. We don't have a record for your account. 
please provide your name, right? So we can set this up here. We can add a block. We can make it a text input where we are asking for the name. And when somebody submits this, we would then create the new record for them. Now, how do we control the logic in the branch? Well, that's easy too. First and foremost, I like to name my branches. You can see here it says branch one. So let's close down this little side panel and we can drill into this. We'll click on branches. And here you can see we've got branch one. I can rename this to be uh, no user exists. And now we set up those conditions. So I can say, well, back here, when I searched here, if I found no output, right? So let's go back to that previous step. I'll bring in the primary field name. And for the condition now, I will say that it is empty, meaning that we did not find anything. That's essentially what this is saying, right? So let's find that is empty. So in the condition where I performed a search for that email address and I found nothing, then I'm going to get a branch that says, we don't have a user. Do you want us to create a new user for you? Please provide your name. So now we've accepted that input. And let's go ahead and actually set up this step. We're going to go ahead and run and create the sample data again. I'll put in my name, Gareth, and I'll say done. Perfect. And now we're going to use that in the next step, which will be to add that data to Airtable. So again, in this same branch here, I'm going to click the plus again, and I will say integrations to Airtable. In this case, I'm going to create a new record, and I'm going to add both the user name and email to Airtable. So we're going to select that Airtable connection again. Let's go continue now. We'll select the base ID again. It was called ply portal test in our contacts table. Let's load that. And all we need to do is create that record with those two pieces of information. Now recall the name came from step five. So we're going to find it here. The email came from step two. So we'll find it here. And then of course we need to select the stage. And Obviously, this is a brand new one, so we're going to send it to the first phase, agreement signature. Let's go ahead and test the step here. And you'll see in the background, actually, a new record being created in Airtable, and it's going to follow those rules, name, email, and stage. Now, of course, in this particular case, because my email already existed, it would not have gone down this path. But this is an example of how you can use these portals in real time. So now, my user... If we go back to the top of this flow, is going to log into the portal by providing their email address. We're going to search Airtable and find that no user exists for that address. That will take us down the branch and say, please provide your name, and then we'll create a record for you. Easy peasy. Now, the other option, of course, will be threefold. We're going to have three other branches, phase one, phase two, phase three. And each one of these is going to have its own action steps all based on what we found when we searched the records. If we find a record that has something in phase one, then we're going to go through phase one. If we're finding a record with phase two, then we're going to get that deposit. If we're in phase three, we're going to say you're fully onboarded. So you can see how someone has now a fully interactive onboarding experience that's tied to a workflow automation, all built inside of a portal. This isn't fully tested. You can see I still have my warning sign here, so I can't yet publish. Let's go ahead and test this step. We're going to see, okay, we're now successfully tested here. So I'm going to go to one final place. Here's my thank you screen. This is what happens when someone's fully done through the entire workflow. They've gone through the whole thing. I can also go into design and change the look of this. I'm going to skip the tutorial for now, and I'm just going to pick a simple theme. Let's go with the black theme, and I'm going to apply it, plug it in right there. Let's publish our portal and we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see how it works in real time. And here it comes. Just takes a few seconds, not too long at all. At the end of this, we're gonna have the URL for the portal. All right, we are now fully published. Let's go ahead and open up. We're gonna copy our URL. Note that we can also customize it. I'm gonna open it in a new tab here. This is my brand new portal that I just launched inside of Ply. It's fully integrated now with my Airtable database. And I'm going to come in and provide an email address. That's the first step. Now, back here in email, I've got my own. And then I have two tests. Let me actually delete myself as a user so that I'm not in here. And imagine that I am coming here for the first time. I provide my email address. I click done. It's going to take me to the next step. 
So as we were testing, we went down a path that we did not intend, which means that we set up our logic incorrectly in our branches. We have to go back into our branches and fix that. So right here, we clicked on the field name. And what I'm noticing when I go back in here, if I get rid of this and I hit that plus and I look down here, this is uh, like not within the record that we actually found itself, which is probably part of the problem here. So let's not use that. Let's drill into the record that we found and say, use the first item. So I'm using now the record ID of the first item that we found. And I'm saying, if that is empty, now I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that that implies that we found nothing. Let's go ahead and test that step and see what happens. So we're getting, you know, a successful test. Hopefully that was everything we needed. We'll try this one more time after we republish our app. Let's go ahead and open up our link again. So I'm going to copy this. I think I already have it open, but we're going to try it one more time. Here we go. Here's our reloaded, updated portal. Let's drop in our email address and hopefully it finds nothing. It should find that there is not a user. And there we go. It followed the right path. It's saying there is no user here because again, I've already deleted that from our database. So now I will provide a name and it will say done. And so you can see how this is an interactive form. Now that record already exists in Airtable and I'm ready for the agreement signature, but this is like an interactive experience. I am a user, I'm going through this process. The process is dependent upon certain outputs that we're receiving as we integrate with this data. Very, very powerful stuff. I'm excited to hear about how you are using Ply's new portals. Please drop any comments or thoughts below. And if you have more advanced questions, feel free to swing by our website. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, my friends, keep on building.